We do this one time for the old school era, man. Since 1974 radio. Welcome to the Midwest Independent Show. Hip hop and RB for everywhere you go. Every Tuesday from 8:15 to 10. Catch I in the DJ show with Dez. Ready for the weekend. Friday next from 10 to midnight. You got the goal line set. Now Monday through Friday, dead at noon. Catch my homie Ty House, Howard in the moon. Saturday, my favorite. Got the OG show. From 6 to 7, got you saying, oh God, no. Lorraine, the fly city, back at it for show. From the trap, RB and even rhythm and soul. This that since when 1974 in case you had no clue well now you know from that 440 to the 810 was all possible cause a tie house let's go hey hey so how you doing you're listening to since 1974radio.com and this is yeah the Midwest Best Independent Hip Hop and uh, R&B. Yo. Yo, yo. What up, though? This is since 1974 radiocom uh-huh. Home of the Midwest Best Independent Hip Hop and R&B. You are tuned into the fourth quarter sports show. Hello? What's good? This is my dog. With, with the clock and locking, y'all was good in the time. Uh, we got some stuff to talk about. You know the Browns and the Bears. Uh, I mean the Miami Dolphins got stayed head coach Clapton. Pop, it would be the first thing popped out your mouth. Would be the Browns, the Browns. What the hell going on with my other camera? Oh, I'm plugged in. Yeah, the Browns got a new coach, man. Right. They got a new coach. Keep talking for a second. Yeah. Uh, Pete. We got Hugh Jackson in the house. Also, early on in the week, Adam McGay, Chicago, the, the, the uh, defensive coordinator uh, of the Chicago Bears, is on his way to Miami. So we got two new head coaches, and we still got some vacancies. I guess everybody else is waiting. It's only one that really matter right now. That's the uh, the whole uh, thing that's going on here in Northeast Ohio. Right. With right. Uh, Hugh Jackson, former offensive coordinator of the Cincinnati Bengals, taking over for uh, Mike Patton or whatever the hell his name is. So, guy from Cincinnati who used to be the Oakland Raider coach for what one year? He was the coach of the Raiders for one year. Yeah, one year. Not, has not. took over the reins here in Cleveland, Ohio. He had his press conference and everything today. Yeah. It was it was better jobs available than this Cleveland team. And I say that. I say that because this Cleveland team. And no shade. I know this is Northeast Ohio, yo, and y'all want me to say something positive about y'all football team, but the reality of the whole situation is the Browns suck. And, you know, that starts at the top. Yeah, Jim Haslin all the way down. This is a very dysfunctional organization. Um, For him to come from where he came from, Cincinnati, you know, uh, being in the playoffs again, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, them losing over the weekend to Pittsburgh. But uh, that uh, made it available for him to be able to become the Cleveland Brown coach. Um, everybody was high on Adam Gase, as you spoke of earlier, that took the job in Miami. Right. So I, I kind of feel like Cleveland hopped on the next best thing. What you think? Which is true. It, it, they did hop on the next best thing because – if they didn't do what they had to do, they would have lost out on Hill Jackson, too. Because what I heard that San Francisco was trying to get him. Okay. I don't know if that would have been a bad thing to let him go to uh, San Francisco. It, would, it, um, would, it wouldn't have been a bad thing. It wouldn't have been. I also heard that he accepted the Cleveland Browns job 
as he was about to board a plane to uh, go take an interview for the New York Giants job, which to me right now is uh, what I would say is, is, is the best coaching vacancy available. You, you walk into a team with a, a two-time MVP Super Bowl quarterback and Eli Manning. True. You got uh, Victor Cruz coming back off injury reserve this year. He was he, he played sparingly this past year, but you know I think he'll be back at full strength next year. You got an all world wide receiver in Odell Beckham, and and the defense isn't too shabby. So you you got some pieces to build with in New York, whereas you come to Cleveland, you starting completely the fuck over. Yeah, you like yeah. Cleveland is like a you're gonna be like picking a fantasy team or something like an expansion draft or something. It's, it's bad, and, and they got the number two pick. And, I mean, this is not really one of those drafts where you just see a, a star in the draft. You know, you, you, you see a couple of players that, you know, might be some nice pieces, but you don't see no stars. You don't see nobody that's coming out of college this year that you just say, this guy is a surefire Hall of Famer. True, true. So, I mean, you need a quarterback. You have no playmakers on offense, period. No, no, no. The defense has gotten old and beaten up. So it's kind of like, is this really the job you want to take after watching them get rid of two quarterbacks, I mean, two coaches, head coaches in three years? You know, um, do you think they're going to give Hugh Jackson four, five years to turn this around? Or will December roll around? They're four and four and ten. And the city's calling for his head because you know it's not going to take long for the people of Cleveland to be calling. For, right now, there's, oh, this is a great hire. I think we're, we're finally on the right path. But they said the same thing at the Mike Patton. They said the same thing when Romeo Crowell was here. Yeah. And, and the minute things don't go their way, they're ready to fire their coach. And things is not going to go his way next year. Well, I also heard that uh, Bernie Kosar might be working the front office. So... Oh, damn. Free beers for everybody. <laughs> That's fucked up. Well, anyway, I think it will be a good year. We can, we'll can we see what happens, you know. I'm going to give him about two, three years to turn this team around. Because we have to rebuild this thing right now. I mean, from my understanding, I, well, I heard that Joe Thomas may be leaving. Alex Mack might be leaving, you know, so. Definitely Johnny Manziel is out the picture. Yeah, he's definitely gone. He'll definitely make that statement. He's done. So, you you really don't have a quarterback, first of all. You got the number two pick. Will you take a quarterback in the draft? If, if I want the Browns, I would take the, the quarterback first. Then, I will go after Joey Bosa. Because he's a great defensive end. That's where I would go. I mean, I would rebuild the defense back up as well while I'm rebuilding the offense at the same time. That's why. That's just my opinion. This team is, 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 is the Browns, speaking on the Browns still, is really confusing to me. You, you don't have a general manager in place. No. But you hired a coach. I'm still, I'm still don't understand what. I still don't understand what what their plans are with the general manager. They're, and not with do anyone. And I think they're waiting to see what happens with the playoffs. Then we might go, they might steal a man, general manager from a, another team. You never know. But, I mean, you want chemistry on your team. The thing that happened to Hugh Jackson when he was with the Raiders, he went 8-8 eight and eight one season with the Raiders. And they fired him for that? They, and he was fired. And it wasn't because he went 8-8. Eight and eight. It was because they hired a new general manager. And the general manager brought in the coach that he wanted to have coach the team. Now, here you fast forward a couple of years, and we're here in Cleveland. You've hired a coach 
but you haven't fi- hired a general manager. Right, right. And it's the general manager's job to hire a coach. The owner is supposed to own. That's it. But I think, as I've talked to a few people, I think this situation is a little bit different. It's more like the Dallas situation where you got Jerry Jones down there in Dallas. He's the owner of the team. He's the vice president. He's the general manager. He makes all the moves down there in Dallas. And that hasn't really been that successful in Dallas. I mean, granted, they were 11 and 5 last year, made it to the playoffs, you know. But before that, it would you'd be hard pressed to to say the Cowboys have done anything. So I don't think that that experiment works down there in Dallas, and I don't think it's going to work here in Cleveland. Um. I like Hugh Jackson. I wish him the best, but I think he really stepped into a pile of shit with this Browns team. I mean, they are brown. What you got? Well, I got to tell you, we'll see what happens. I'm, I, right now, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic. Normally, I'll be like, what do they, what do they do? Where, why do they pick it? But I'm, I'm very optimistic right now, so I'm hoping Whoever is the new general manager, I hope they choose the right person this time. So right. I don't know what Ray Farmer was thinking when he's back at Johnny Mizell in a, what, first round? Well, you know, Ray Farmer made a lot of bad choices. A lot of them. Over the, over the opportunities that he was the general manager he, with the draft picks. He made a lot of bad choices. And I don't really think that Johnny Menzel was a bad pick. I just think it was he was the team the team that he was playing for was the wrong team. Was the wrong team. That's just like I hear a lot of people saying that since Hugh Jackson is the coach that he's going to bring AJ McCrair up from Cincinnati, which I mean wouldn't be too bad of an idea seeing how he played against Pittsburgh the other night. You know he he didn't play a bad game. He, no, he almost beat did. Pittsburgh. Sure did. Um, you know what? That would be a great idea. I also heard, this is Cleveland, AFC North. Mm-hmm. Their owner is a Pittsburgh man. I know. And then you bring in a head coach that's a Cincinnati Bengal. Hmm. I mean, these are two teams that you, that you don't like. You have a Pittsburgh man. Part owner. He used to be part owner of the Pittsburgh right. Steelers. Right, but no, you yeah, had to let that go. Uh, I mean, okay. But what I'm trying to say is, when he was a Pittsburgh Steeler, do you think he gave a fuck about the Cleveland Browns? No, he you didn't. Know, he despised the Cleveland Browns. He was a Steeler. Of course. I knew that. So, but, what makes the situation any better now that he's the owner? It really does. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to have a new owner as well. Because when I, cause I remember when I found out that he was part owner of the Steelers. I remember that. Mm-hmm. But I think they passed a law in the NFL that you cannot have no percentage, part percentage of the team that you are like, that's in the same Oh, I, no doubt. That, that or, would be a contra- conflict of interest. I have that's no what happened. That. They, they told him you have to stay on your own. Yeah, before he could even even well, buy the he, Cleveland Browns. He exactly. Had to, that's yeah. what they made him but, I mean, his, but he's still a stealer. You can't what? take that from him. He's all, he's, he, he, he paid money into being a stealer. He has Super Bowl rings from when the Steelers won the Super Bowl. He has Steeler memorabilia. You know, a lot of his friends are Steelers. The, the very person, the very team that, that the Cleveland Browns despise with a passion. But I don't want to spend too much time on Cleveland. They hired a good, they hired a, a good head coach, and we're gonna wish them the best of luck next year. Yeah. But uh, I do want to talk about Lawrence Phillips. Man, forty years old, was found dead in his prison cell today. Former Nebraska Cornhusker great. He had a, he, I mean, Phillips. He had a he had a violent streak. I want to say he, he he got into a couple of bad situations and, and he was locked up and was serving a thirty one year sentence for domestic abuse, kidnapping, 
kidnapping as well as other things. He uh stole a car and drove into a crowd of kids after a pickup game, after a pickup football game. Kids. Yeah, injured injured a bunch of kids. That was part of his sentence as far as as well as, you know, the domestic violence. Damn. And, and like I say, he was sentenced to 31, 32 years in prison. He back in, he really back in. He really did knock some stuff up. And then while he was in prison, he caught a murder case where he uh, so allegedly strangled his bunk mate. Yeah, he felt good. He felt good in the family. I don't know. So they say at 12.05 this morning, he was found dead on his floor. They're not sure if it was suicide or what happened. But he was pronounced dead at 1.27 a.m., 40 years old. Wow. I mean, on the football field, fucking amazing. A beast. Oh, always. Off the football field, very troubled. But at the same time, we want to pray for his family and send out our well wishes to any children that he may have, his mother, his father, his sisters, and anybody else that cares about him. You know, that's still a sad way to see, you know, such a – Amazing talent. Go down the drain like that. And mental issues is, is a is a is a, a, a major it's, problem here in yeah, the United it's States. It's real. It's real. It is real. Um but just wanted to, you know, mention that. We also got some more new news. Good news. I guess that would be some good news. I, I mentioned it at the uh, end of the regular season. The St. Louis Rams are no longer the St. Louis Rams. They yeah, are once I, again the Los Angeles Rams. Now I got to get rid of my Ram jersey now. Because it's still say, it's still say, say, nope. Well, I mean, they were originally the Cleveland Rams. Right. But then they was the L.A. Rams. Then they was the St. Louis Rams. Now they're going back to L.A. L.A., what's up with They, uh... It's stadium issues, man. It's, it's, it's stadium issues. In LA, they in LA they're building a um hold up one point four billion dollar stadium in uh, Go St. Louis got their own stadium though? They don't have a one point four billion dollar stadium and St. Louis is not Los Angeles. Los Angeles has over eight million people living in the city. St. Louis is a small market. It's a, I mean, you know, LA deserves a football team. Their fan base is big enough for a football team. And hell, wasn't nobody showing up to watch the St. Louis Rams in St. Louis? No way. It's been since 2000 when they won the Super Bowl that, you know, anybody really gave a damn about St. Louis. So that, it only made sense. It only, it only made sense for them to. Uh, you see, I'm a Midwest person, so, you know, any team that's in the Midwest, I'm down for. Mm-hmm. You know, so I really, really did hate to see them go because that was the only team. In the Midwest, that had my school color. Where we want to go? You know what I'm saying? Right. That's why I'm not going to say those last. Well, I mean, they are I'm sure they probably will keep the same colors. Oh, yeah, they will. They will. They'll just be the L.A. rounds once again. Yep. Flashbacks of Eric Dickerson. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember him. It's, it's a very real possibility that they may be sharing their stadium, though. What? Um, The San Diego Chargers. Maybe moving to L.A. I mean, what's up with that? Why have two teams in L.A.? Because L.A. is a big market. It's big enough to support two teams. Okay. And right now they don't have no teams. Um, the Oakland Raiders is another team that has been mentioned. Yeah. But most likely they won't be going anywhere. They're staying. I got a little breaking news. What's up? The New York Giants plan to hire Ben McAdoo as head coach. Ben McAdoo. Hold on. Did he used to coach, uh... Are you a college coach? Well, uh, this is breaking news. I'm trying to get a little bit more information on it right now. All they gave me was that he is to replace Tom Coughlin. They will wow. have more news story on this news later. Yeah, didn't he? Didn't he and he was dying, though, didn't he? I have never heard of Ben McAdoo before in my life. No, no, I'm talking about uh, Tom, what's his name? Oh, Tom Coughlin, yeah. Yeah, I, I still don't understand why did he leave really God. It was time. He had won two championships. The team wasn't, wasn't responding to him as well. It was just time. Okay, I can understand that. Uh, you say the Chargers 
Hold on a second. The Rams Stadium won't be ready to open in L.A. until 2019. So where will they be playing? It's a Chargers owner Dan Sapino has one year to exercise his option to join the Rams in the Inglewood Stadium that is due to open in 2019. It doesn't sound like he will take even a month to decide. The Chargers have seen the framework of the stadium deal with the Rams and Chargers General Counsel on Wednesday said the Chargers have just started the process of examining the deal framework and relocating to Los Angeles. They will have to pay $550 million to be able to relocate to L.A. Why they got a claim so much? It's called a relocation fee. And so, can the, uh, you can do the same thing? Yes, $550 million to be able to relocate to L.A. And um, But they don't have to build a stadium. The, the city of Los Angeles is building this stadium for them to come play. A $1.4 billion stadium. Um, if the Chargers turn it down, then the Raiders would be up next. But the NFL has also proposed to give both teams, the San Diego Chargers and the Oakland Raiders, $100 million dollars if they stay in their current city and build a stadium. Who? The NFL? Yeah. Uh, the on, Raiders. They only often get to who? The San Diego Chargers and the Oakland Raiders, right? Yep. So really, they only want the Rams in LA. I mean. That would make sense, though. It, 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 it could, it could, it could, they could take two teams, and I think it's more or less they want San Diego because San Diego is not that far from L.A., Whereas Oakland is three, four hours away from LA, San Diego is an hour, hour and a half. Yeah, that so is, I mean, like that, would be, that, that would fan be, base, yeah. the San Diego fans would migrate to LA to see their Chargers still, yeah. you know. So um, we got that going on. We got the Raiders moving. I mean, I mean the uh, the Rams moving, Chargers possibly moving, and then the Raiders maybe if the Chargers don't go anywhere. We got the playoffs in, in full gear. Last week, we had the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Cincinnati Bengals, the Kansas City Chiefs versus the Houston Texans, the Seattle Seahawks versus the Minnesota Vikings, and the Green Bay Packers versus the Washington Redskins. Let's start at what was a hell of a game. Let's let's start with this Kansas City-Houston game. This was a whitewash. This won't take long at all. No, it was Kansas City went down to Houston and beat the hell out of Houston. They sure did. In at home, in at home. Brian Hoyer had four interceptions. I know he's a hometown hero, but he had four interceptions. They will be looking for a new quarterback down in Houston next year. Yes, they will. 30 to nothing was the score? Yes, 30 to nothing. So Kansas City moves on to play New England Patriots this weekend. Then you had the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Cincinnati Bengals in what was a pretty awesome game. Yeah. I, I was very, very entertained with that game. Yeah. Uh, the Steelers jumped out to, what, a 15 to nothing lead? Yup. And uh, Cincinnati clawed their way back. It was a hard-hitting football game on both sides. Uh, yeah. Really impressive. A couple people got knocked out of the game from hard hits. Yeah, but one person, only one person got suspended. And I don't think he should have been suspended. Because, he, he right. Did. He got suspended for three games. Wow. Yeah, for three games. The NFL. But he wasn't the only one that was getting punished on the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, and I'm not mistaken, I think Pac-Man Jones, he didn't get suspended, but he was fined. I can't remember how much, what was, how much was the fine, though. Mm-hmm. Cincinnati, uh, the, like I said, they, they started off losing 15 to nothing, and they fought back to take the lead 16 to 15 with a uh, – like maybe two minutes left in the game. Yeah. And they kicked the ball off. Pittsburgh drove down the field. They needed to get to around the 45, 35-yard line to kick a field goal. And as they approached the 50-yard line, uh, what's his name? Barrett? Barrett? Uh, yeah. Barrett? Bar- 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 Something like that. Uh, laid a, 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 a very hard but legal hit on Antonio Bryant. Laid him out. Um, was flagged for a personal foul and they moved the ball up 15 yards and in all the commotion that was going on on the field 
Adam Pac-Man Jones ended up getting into it with uh, Steelers coach Joey Porter, who was standing behind the Cincinnati Bengals huddle. Should not have even been on the field, but they called a penalty on Pac-Man Jones, Adam Jones. Right, but they didn't call a penalty on the uh, the Steelers coach. Come on, man. Which gave them another 10 yards when they only needed – that's 25 yards when they only needed 14 yards to be in field goal range. So uh, they kicked the field goal. Won the game 18 to 16, and they will move on and take on the Denver Broncos this week. That was Saturday. Sunday, we had the Seattle Seahawks making their way to Minnesota in what was a sub zero game. I think the temperature stayed at like minus two all the way up until like the last few seconds of the game where it finally reached zero. Really? See, Seattle won this game. Off a missed field goal from 27 yards out I'm still about that. by the Minnesota Vikings. I'm still about that. How you think the people in Minnesota feel? They were. I know they were pissed. Seattle will move on and take on the Carolina Panthers in this weekend's game. And we also had the Green Bay Packers taking on the Washington Redskins Man, in Washington. Was that a game or what? The Washington Redskins jumped out to an early 11-point lead, 11 to nothing. And blew it. Before giving up 35 unanswered points. And they went on to lose the game 35 to 18. Green Bay will uh, make its way to Arizona, a team that demolished Green Bay on the last game of the season. I don't know if Green Bay was trying to hide their hand. But the uh, NFC North Division title was on the on the line, and they went out to Arizona and laid an egg. Or is Arizona just that good? Because Arizona has a defense, and they have an offense. Yes, they do. And this will be a great game because it will be Arizona and Green Bay. Yep, this week we got Seattle versus Carolina, Green Bay versus Arizona, Pittsburgh versus Denver, Kansas City versus New England. Let me get your predictions from you over there, Mad Dog. Who you got in the Kansas in the Kansas City versus New England game? I'm gonna go with Kansas City. You taking uh, Kansas City? I'm taking Kansas City. I know. I normally. I normally. I would pick the New England Patriots. Normally, mm-hmm. but I think they, I think their time is up in the playoffs, and it's time to let a new team start. The New England Patriots are the defending Super Bowl champions. And after going through deflate gate all of off season, last off season, they came in and did what Patriots do. They just win. They just win. And I I think if this game was played in Kansas City, I would take Kansas City as well. But I'm going to go with the New England Patriots because uh, it's kind of hard to bet against Tom Brady. Next up, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers traveling out to Denver to take on Peyton Manning. I also got to mention that Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback Ben Roslenberger tore some ligaments in his arm, in his throwing arm, and as well as his shoulder. That's good, right? In the Cincinnati game. He, right. he did come back at the end of the game and lead him on the game winning drive. Yeah, he did. After being sacked by, what's my man's name, 55? Barry Ricks, uh, yeah, Barry something Rico. like that. Him. that. That's the same guy who got the suspension. Right. So we got Pittsburgh traveling to Denver with a lame quarterback, probably going to end up having a Landry play. And um, I hate to say it, but I'm going to take Denver. Denver has a defense. The Denver defense has been there all year. The offense is not nothing to be, you know, laughing at or, I mean, nothing to get too excited about. But I'm going to take Denver in this game. I'm I'm also going to take Denver because – Peyton Manning will be starting. I'm a Peyton Manning fan. I'm not a Denver Broncos fan. I'm a Peyton. Get that right. I'm a Peyton Manning fan. It hurts my heart to see him go leave Indianapolis and go to the Denver Broncos. It really hurts me. But I'm gonna go with Denver on this one, even though I cannot stand the Denver Broncos because of what happened in 1984. You still holding the grudge from 84? Yes, I am. Now, they, they did not kick that field goal. He missed that field goal. And, they, and we still want, lost the AFC uh, championship because of that. They okay. know damn well they lied. After that, we got Green Bay taking on Arizona. 
I'm gonna go with the Cardinals, man. Because I, Me I'm too. pretty much the same way because of how you feel about Denver. I, I can't stand Green Bay. I understand that Aaron Rodgers is a good quarterback, but I just can't stand Green Bay, and their defense really don't scare me. So I'm going to roll with the Arizona Cardinals in that I, game. I'm with, I'm with you on that too. I can I'm, I'm not a Green Bay fan myself. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll with Arizona because they got that great offense and they got that great defense. Uh, next up, we got – this is what I think may be the game of the week. We got the Seattle Seahawks taking on the Carolina Panthers, who had the best record in the league. Um, home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Seattle is on the road for the second straight time after narrowly escaping Minnesota. So, uh, I think I'm going to roll with uh, Cam. Oh, yeah. Oh, Cam. Google Cam. Cam, won't you Cam for me? Or something like that. Oh, what you yeah. got? I got, you already know who it is. I got Cam Newton and the Carolina Panthers. That's what's up, man. We got this NBA music playing in the backdrop, so it's only right that we talk NBA now. You know what I'm saying? We we got our picks for the NFL. We talked about the coaching moves. We talked about Lawrence Phillips. We also discussed uh, the Rams moving back to L.A. Let's talk about these NBA power rankings. As of right now, the San Antonio Spurs are still the number one team in the league. Wow. 32 and 6, followed by the Golden State Warriors, who are 35 and 12. You have the Cleveland Cavaliers making their way up from 4 to 3, 26 and 9. Well, then you have course. the Oklahoma City Thunder at 4 at 26 and 12. Oh, yeah. Los Angeles Clippers are 25 and 13. The Clip Ooh, excuse me. The Clippers have made a nice turnaround from where they were earlier in the season. You got the Toronto Raptors coming in at six at 24 and 15. The Chicago Bulls are seven, 22, I mean 22 and 13. And my Detroit Pistons are eight at 21 and 16, followed by Miami. Number 10 is Atlanta, 11, Indiana, 12, Dallas, 13, Memphis, 14, Boston, 15, Houston, 16, Utah. Hmm, Utah. 17 and 20. Wow. The New York Knicks are 17. 18th is the Washington Wizards, 19 Orlando Magic, 20 Sacramento Kings, 21 Portland Trail Blazers, 22 the Charlotte Hornets, 23 the New Orleans Pelicans. It's so disappointing. 24 the Milwaukee Bucks, another disappointment. 25 the Denver Nuggets, 26 the Minnesota Timberwolves, 27 New, New Jersey Nets, Brooklyn Nets, sorry. 28 Phoenix Suns, 29 the Los Angeles Lakers, who are 8 and 31. And the Philadelphia 76ers round up the bottom of the bunch, being 30th, 4 and 36. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Cavs are on like an 8 9 game win streak. Yes, they are. They've been, they've been a, a, a thousand, maybe. Kyrie has been looking pretty good. Yeah. Oh, hopefully, he will stay healthy. Stuff they got to go through there. Texas this week. They got to play Dallas, Houston, and San Antonio this week. Well, they all got to play Dallas because they, they won uh, 110 to 107. Now they got San Antonio. Now they got San Antonio. That's going to be a game catch right there. Mm -hmm. You know San Antonio is number one in the league. So. Followed by Houston. Right. But see, I'm not. I'm not too worried about Houston because I know they're gonna beat their ass. The talk around the league is. I know how much you hate to talk about the Golden State Warriors and Steph Curry and anything, but uh, like I say, they're number two. They're thirty-five and and two. That means we are five games away from the halfway point. They are chasing the NBA record of all-time wins with seventy-two wins. 72 wins, Bulls 95, 96, if I'm correct. They went 72 and 10. Yeah. So Golden State would have to lose eight games, eight of their remaining 47 games. In order to beat the, the Bulls record? To tie the record. To tie the record, okay. I see them beating this record by maybe two, three, possibly three games. I, I, you, have to, you have to understand that, um, you know, they've played a couple of games without Harrison Barnes. they played a couple of games without Klay Thompson. They played a couple of games without Steph Curry. Uh, Draymond Green is not playing tonight against Denver. Nothing's wrong with him. Uh, they're just starting to rest their players, which is uh, an awesome idea. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty much they could probably lose 20 of their next of the next 47 games and still make the playoffs, still win almost 60 games. So um, 
That's possible. I see, I, see, I see that happen. I see that happen. They play the Lakers and, and Detroit the rest of this week. Oh, they got Denver still. Denver, the Lakers, and Detroit the rest of this week. Um, you got the Thunder, who's another team which I've been high on. They've been winning a lot of shootout lately. Their defense is 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 almost non-existent, and they're going to have to shore that up. Yeah. Because other teams like the the Clippers, who are right there on their trail, yep. plays a little defense, and they got a couple of superstars over there. Even though we don't want to give them credit, and not just do they have superstars, they have a proven coach. They have an NBA championship quality coach in Doc Rivers, yep. who was also the general manager out there. That's good. So, um, we, we we coming up on the second half of the season. But before we get to the second half of the season, we got to go through All-Star. That's right. So, uh, give me your uh, your starting five for East East team, for the East team. Who you got over there? For the East team, of course, I'm going to have to go with my man, LeBron. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go with D-Wade. Um, I'm gonna say I don't know if Carmelo is doing anything on the court right now, but I will squeeze him up in there. But as my big man, I'm gonna have to go with Chicago's big man on that one. You a hater? Why? Wow, why you say I'm a hater? Cause you a hater. What? Well, what's wrong with Detroit? I'm going to put him in there, too. Oh, this last year. I don't want to see last year. Yeah, I'm going to put him he up in there. The, the power forward is going to be the Duke of Detroit. I put, I put him at power forward. Okay, what's your five again? LeBron. Uh, big man from Detroit. Big man from Chicago. Uh, D-Wade. And who, I, who else did I say? Uh, ah, what's his name? Uh, Duke of Washington. So you really gonna leave Kyrie out? Well, I mean, he could be in the. I mean, he could squeeze in the starting five. I mean, I'm not gonna put him in there because of Rob. I mean, to be real, right? Okay, I'm gonna give you my starting five. At point guard, I'm going to go with Kyrie Irving. Okay. At shooting guard, I'm going to go with Paul George. My small forward is LeBron James. Yep. My power forward is Carmelo Anthony. Okay. And my center is Andre Drummond. Yeah, the Pittsburgh. I mean, For Pittsburgh. Detroit. Detroit yeah. As of right now, as far as votes go, these are the top five vote getters from the Eastern Conference. Wait a minute. These are the these are the top five forwards, no front court players, including centers, centers and forwards. Oh, okay. You got LeBron James at one, Paul George at two, Andre Drummond at three, Carmelo Anthony at four, Paul Gasol the fifth, Chris Bosh six, Kevin Love seven, Hassan Whiteside eighth. Christoph Porzingis, ninth, and Giovanni Apatikiko to him, 10. So, hold on. So, go, so that would be the East team? I'm, I'm saying these are the, the leading vote getters. So, I, got, so, you I, know, I got a feeling they all will make it. See, so what it is is your starting lineup is picked by the, by the leading vote getters. Yeah, I see that. So, right now you will have LeBron James. And Paul George, LeBron probably would be your power forward. Mm-hmm. Paul George would be your small forward. Right. And Andre Drummond would be your center. Exactly. Your uh, leading guards for the East is uh, right now Dwayne Wade, followed by Kyrie Irving, followed by Kyle Lowry, Jimmy Butler, John Wall, DeMar Rosen, Derrick Rose, Jeremy Lin. Huh? Isaiah How Thomas and uh, Reggie Jackson. Now, Jeremy Lin should not be in there. Jeremy Lin, he's, he, he's been doing all right down there in Charlotte. It's just the team isn't panning out. And you got to realize he is one of the only Asian players in the league, and you have a lot of Asian people that's going to vote for him just because he's Asian. 
Yeah, but he is eighth, so you probably won't see him in the playoff. I mean, in the All Star game. Good. Now the West for the front court, the the lead. Oh, well, first give me your uh five, your starting five for the West. Right in the huh? Right in the Let me hear. Back all turn. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta give it to him. I mean, I don't like it. I don't what? like to do that at all. But I, I mean, I'm gonna give him his props. I mean, doing, I mean, his respect. Okay, that's your starting point guard on the West. Number two, my shooting guard, Kevin Durant. Okay. Number three, it's gonna be Russell Westbrook. Okay. And my number four will be Kevin Duncan. And my number five is, I was going to say Dwight Howard, but what's the old boy from uh, L.A. Cooking? Blake Griffin, right there behind you. Blake, that's, that's who I'm talking about. He, that's your starting that, five? That's my starting five right there to the West. All right, my five, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Steph Curry, my point. I'm going to go with Durant as my two. This is a toss-up right here. I really like Kawhi Leonard. He's a good he's a good player. And I want to put him at my small forward, but I can't put him over Draymond Green. You can't. So Draymond Green is my small forward. Okay. At center, I got Anthony Davis. Oh, my God, Anthony Davis. And I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Blake Griffin at my power forward. Okay. Now, the leaders for the front court players, leading vote getter is Kobe Bryant, somebody that we didn't mention. He will be your starting small forward. Kevin Durant, Draymond Green, Kawhi Leonard, Blake Griffin, Anthony Davis, Tim Duncan, Zaza Pachulia, DeMarcus Cousin and Annis Cantor round out the top ten. For your Sorry. guards, you have Steph Curry, Russell Westbrook, Chris Paul, Clay Thompson, James Harden, Rajon Rondo, Andre Iguodala, Tony Parker, and Damian Lillard. You know what? I forgot about Rondo. What is he playing at now? He's in Sacramento. Yeah, I it was. About it was hard Rondo. to leave. Cliff, it was hard to leave Clay Thompson. And James Harden off of that list. What? Both of those are all-star caliber players. I'm quite sure both of them will be picked by coaches because outside of the top five, the other seven players are picked by coaches to fill out the rosters. So uh, I'm looking for all of those. I'm, I'm looking for James Harden, Chris Paul, Clay Thompson, all to be a part of the West and all the way down to maybe possibly Tim Duncan with the East. Okay. I mean, with the uh, West front court players. Before before we go into the college basketball, I, want, we, I forgot to mention about, we forgot to mention about Alabama, what happened on Monday night. Yeah, we definitely got to talk about, that's where I was headed next. I was going to talk about Alabama next. After we got through with the NBA, um, which I think we threw it. Uh, we, did, we did the power rankings. We did yeah. our all-star selections, which is coming up on Valentine's Day, if I'm correct. Yeah. Next up, we got uh, NCAA football has concluded with a, uh, our second college football playoff, which we had begged for for 10, 15, 20 years. We finally got it. Last year, the Ohio State Buckeyes prevailed in the playoffs, winning the national championship. And on the, en route to their national championship, they knocked off Alabama. This year... Uh, we had Alabama taking on Clemson. Clemson, which was the number one team going into the thing, and Alabama was the number two team. Um, I must say that I really didn't get a chance to watch this game. I kind of was in and out on this game. I watched it, but it was kind of kept dozing off. I, every time I woke up, it was like they had scored 14 more points in the second half. I mean, it was they scored almost 30 points apiece in the second half. Because it was 14 to 14 at halftime, tied up. The final score was Alabama 45, Clemson 40. Right. Um, I think Nick Saban should leave and go to the NFL now. 
he could, but he, then he just then he said he's not leaving. I I I I don't think nobody's throwing throwing my money yet. I think the New York Giants, even though they say they didn't pick the coach, should have went after Nick Saban. I honestly, I think the Browns should have went after him. Well, they did. I don't I don't think Nick Saban would have left Alabama to go to the Browns. To go to the Browns. Cause like I said, it's too much of a rebuilding program going on in in uh, Cleveland. Um, in New York, you have known names. It'd have been much easier for him to you know add a few pieces to that and go from there. But uh, Alabama looked good. They may be back next year, depending on if uh, their Heisman Trophy. Junior running back who is a giant decides to come back or not. They uh they will lose their quarterback. He was a senior. Um, but you know Alabama always has a good quarterback. As a matter of fact, they played in the playoffs last year with a, a, a bag up and was in the, the BCS championship the year before that with a bag up. So um I don't look for them to fall too much. I I, I fully expect Clemson to be back next year. And uh, let me make sure I got this camera on me over here because I, I do want y'all to see that that amazing blue M up there. Because, uh, you know, the preseason predictions have came out preseason, early, early preseason yeah, yeah, yeah. rankings. And uh, most people have the Michigan Wolverines in the top five, as high as two on some publications, three on other publications. And uh, I'm very excited about that. Everybody has Clemson as the number one team coming in the next year, but they don't play anybody in the ACC, so we could see them running the table. I don't know how good they'll be come championship time, but Jim Harbaugh is doing a fantastic job, and uh, I'm looking for big things, and uh, I can't wait to November. Because Ohio State Buckeyes just got this building year, so Buckeyes fans, still well, we got this. It's going to take y'all 10 years to do it. I can't wait to November. Right. I can't wait to uh, – the Saturday after Thanksgiving. We will win. We're going to come down here yeah. to, to, to Ohio State. Put a, oh, yeah, yeah, we good to Ohio put a whooping on y'all. Hold up. Oh, yeah. We Hold owe up. y'all. Hold up. It's coming. Hold up. It's we coming. Good. Yeah. Okay, it's coming. We will be ready. I don't think y'all going to be ready. We will be ready. Like I said. Shouts oh. out to NCAA. Oh, yeah. Football, college football. It's, it's going to be uh, exciting, but we got... Hell, nine months before that start. Yep. Starts in September. We just got through with it. So we on to, uh, right now it's all about basketball. That's one of the reasons why we moved the show to Wednesday and cut it down to one hour instead of two because we really don't have much football to talk about. Yeah, let's talk about the NCAA ranking. Let's do that. 25. Let's do that. We got the Kansas City Jayhawks yeah. at number one. Oklahoma at number two. Which I don't understand because Oklahoma was number two last week, but they lost to Kansas. So how did they not move? They lost. Weren't they supposed to move? Uh, No. You know why they didn't move? Because they only lost one. They are 13 and one. Uh, my Michigan State Spartans are 15 and one. 16 and one. Yes. Excuse me. We beat Kansas. Oh, well, you are supposed to be number one then. Um, you know. What yeah. happened? It's politics. Yeah, you're right. You that. got, uh, like I say, right now, the, the rankings is Kansas City one. Oklahoma is two. Followed by number three, Maryland. Number four, Michigan. If I'm correct, I'm waiting on my screen to pop up. Number five is North Carolina. I fully expect for, uh, come on, mother... I didn't ask to do none of that. I fully expect for these rankings to change Sunday when the new rankings come out. Yeah, because uh, Kansas lost this week. And uh, Maryland lost to – let me get this back over here. Yeah, uh, Maryland lost to the those go blue guys. Oh, so came out north? So I, I fully expect for – Michigan State to be uh, at least back up to number two, if not number one, because I can't see you putting Oklahoma. I mean, I understand that it was a one versus two. It went to three overtimes. 
They only lost to Kansas by two points or something like that. So I can understand why you kept them at two. But I, I just feel like if you lose, you're supposed to tumble. You are. You are. If you lose, you fucking go so far down the low. Right. I was at five with North Carolina. Number six is a team that I was high on from the beginning of the, uh, of the season when we talked about the college basketball and Villanova. They're making their move. Shouts out to number seven, Xavier, down in Cincinnati. Number eight, Miami of Florida, which none of us saw that coming. Number nine is Duke. Number 10 is undefeated SMU team coached by Larry Brown. Everybody better be on the lookout for that. Oh, Larry Brown is at MSU? SMU, yep. What? Number 11 is West Virginia coached by Huggy Bear. Number 12 is Providence. Number 13 is Virginia. Virginia knocked somebody off this week. I can't remember who it was. I, it might have been North Carolina. Um, Kentucky oh, has fell yeah. all the way to 14. 15 is Texas A&M. 16 is Iowa. The only team that has beaten the Michigan State Spartans this this year, and they play again tomorrow in the rematch. Iowa is 17, 18 is Arizona, 19 is South Carolina, 20 is Pittsburgh, 21 Louisville, 22 Baylor, 23 Butler, 24 Purdue, 25 Gonzaga. Okay, I have one problem with the Vikings. Where the hell is my Buckeye guy? The Buckeye suck. I see that. Bad Mata is on the. Uh, I've heard a lot of rumors that this is be his last year at Who? the U of M. Thad Mata. Oh, what? Yeah. I keep hearing that he's on his way out. Uh, okay. Yep, so look for a new coach there. I also keep hearing that Kentucky might be getting ready to lose their coach, John Calipari, back to the NBA. We'll oh, see oh, how that a, happens. He did come from the NBA, didn't he? But yeah, he, he's coached. Uh, well, actually, he came from Kentucky. He, went, he was at Memphis first. And he was a uh, Derrick Rose head coach at, there in Memphis. Um, he go, he's going back to the NBA. It's a very real possibility. That would be a great opportunity if some of the coaches that did come from the NBA go back. That would, I would like to see that. We'll see, man. It's, it's fit to be, like I said, it's fit to be a lot of changes going on. We are uh, in the midst of NBA and NCAA basketball season, so it's it's really fit to get exciting. A lot of fast breaks and dunks and, you know, a lot of hoopla coming for the start up here. You got, like, maybe a month and a half before March Madness kicks off. Playoffs start shortly after that for the NBA, you know, so it's, it's all basketball from here on out. Oh, yeah, I can't wait. I mean, we still got, we still, you know, got a little Super Bowl to talk about, but you know, that's, that's not yeah, no that's long that's period. Crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. So, um, of these, of these teams, NCAA basketball, we just ran down the top twenty-five. Give me four of these teams that you could see possibly making it to the Final Four. Man, I'm definitely gonna say Michigan State will be one of them. I can see them making a comeback from all those years when Magic got to play. Kansas, I can see that. I'm going to say Maryland, maybe. And I'm going to go ahead with North Carolina. Now, you said you went all the way back to, you were talking about Michigan State, but you went all the way back to Magic Johnson. That was 1979. Michigan has been in nine Final Fours since then. <laughs> Seven well, under I, Tom Izzo and has won well, a national see, championship see, in 2000 I, with the Flintstones. Well, the, the reason why I mentioned Magic Johnson because I'm a I'm a big Magic Johnson fan. Okay. I love the Lakers. I, I have loved the Lakers because of Magic Johnson. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm not only I'm a Cavs fan, I'm also a Lakers fan. Okay, now you, I, I heard you say Michigan State. Yeah. Who else you got? I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Kansas. Okay. I'm going to go with North Carolina, and I'm definitely going with Oklahoma. In the so you're going to take Oklahoma, you're going you're gonna to knock uh, Maryland out of that top five. Yep. I'm okay. going gonna, gonna to go with Michigan State. I don't believe in um, Kansas and Oklahoma. I really don't believe in Maryland. So I'm, I'm going to keep Michigan State in the, in the Final Four. Of course you would. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to take... I'm gonna take Villanova. Okay. That's a tough team. I'm gonna take SMU. 
Okay, I can, I can see that. Can and I'm going to put the good? Dukies there to uh, defend their national title. Oh, man, I forgot about Duke. I might, you know what? Let me kick that guy. I'm going to replace Duke with North Carolina. I'll kick that guy, y'all. It's going to get real interesting as far as how the seeds go down. Yeah. And um, who's going to be the two seeds? Like, all of those teams that I just mentioned could possibly be number one seeds. Duke is the number nine team in the country. SMU is the number 10 team in the country. Villanova, excuse me, is number six. And Michigan State is number four. That's true. So all of these teams are going to be a number one or a number two seed come tournament time. And I, I think I would rather be a two seed than I would a one seed. Yeah. It will be a whole lot better. It will get interesting. It's, it's definitely going to get interesting, man. And uh, shh, ooh, that hour go by fast. Wow. Even if, even with a late start, that hour still go by fast. Goodness gracious. Uh, uh-huh. Next next Wednesday, we'll be back. I'm not sure what time the show might start. We might start at 10 o'clock next week. That's fine with me. And and do the uh, I Am The DJ show from 8 to 10. And then kick off with us from 10 to 11. That way we can uh, get our whole hour in and not be rushed. And um, I got a couple people that said they're going to join us. We're going to try to find us a, another co-host right. over the next couple of weeks. So I'm going to bring a couple people in over the next couple of weeks. And we're going to decide which one of them is uh, best fit to Good stick co-host. around. Stick around with me. All right. So uh, be looking for that next week. I will be posting on the uh, fourth quarter sports page. Make sure y'all go f- like that um, for further information on when we'll be on. We, we definitely going to be on on Wednesday. Just not sure if it's going to be 8 or 10 o'clock yet. We're still trying to figure out and get settled into a good time. So I, actually, I think the show might be better served to do it at 10 o'clock every okay. Wednesday. Yeah. Why regardless. Not? Why not? Um. Because by that time, we'll have all our information. Right. I mean, my only thing is uh, if we add another person nine times out of ten, they're going to be coming from, you know, a nice trip away. So, you know, and then we're not going to have I Am The DJ on Wednesdays all the time. We just got to – I just got to get through this basketball season. The high school basketball is kind of throwing us off with him because he's still going to be on Tuesdays. But um, we're going to figure it out. We're going to keep you all in the know. Make sure you all go like that fourth quarter sports page. Make sure you all go like the uh, – oh, wow. The, uh, since 1974 radio, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, shout your social medias out so people know how to catch up with you. Oh, yeah. This, you, can, you can hit me up on Dan Kale Cook, Facebook. Smooth No Mio. You can also hit me up at Mr. Cook, under, Mr. Underscore Cook, 79 at Instagram. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, this is Mad Dog. Kill it, you know. Make sure you stick with us, man. This is the fourth quarter sports show. That's what we do here, man. We talk sports in the Midwest fashion. If you dig, we've been all over the Browns. I didn't even get a chance to really mention my Lions hiring a new general manager and how he feels about Jim Caldwell. Jim Caldwell may be available here soon. So that's why I say I think the Browns might have jumped the gun and just reached out there and grabbed somebody. Because after the way the Bengals played, I'm not for sure if – Marvin Lewis is still going to be there. He may still get the axe. Yeah, I hardly got that, too. I mean, and then like I say, Jim Caldwell may get the axe. Um, it's going to be a lot of of, 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 of of players, I mean, coaches available after Super Bowl. You may get one of the Arizona. You could have possibly got one of the Arizona coaches, maybe their defensive coordinator or something. Right, You right, got right. Carolina's offensive coordinator going to be available. Terrell Austin is still out there, which I keep telling everybody, leave him alone. Let him come on back to Detroit. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about all that next week, man. We got, we're going to definitely have updates on the coaches. Oh, yeah. We have more news on this whole little uh, NFL back in L.A. I'm sure the NCAA rankings will be done moved. And like we say, we got the Spurs and the Cavaliers this week, so I'm quite sure something going to be done happening in the rankings is that's why I love sports. It's always changing, and it's always something to talk about every week. Um, trying to get us a sexy lady to get a fella something to look at that also got the brains to talk sports. Right. You know, so we, we, we working, man. This is since 1974 radiocom I want to thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you all join us tomorrow at noon. We'll be live. I'll be live tomorrow at noon. But, you know, it's always music playing 24 hours a day, seven days a week, representing the Midwest's best independent hip-hop and R&B. 
So make sure y'all stay tuned into that. Get hip, tune in, and tell a friend. And uh, till next Wednesday, this is the fourth quarter sports show signing out. My God, signing out. Peace.